so I kind of control them and wiggle it through. Something like that. And what I like to do is hit like every span. Whoa, whoa, my line's getting tight. I might have a fish. Oh man, I got a Snooky on. All right, so much for wave fishing this morning on an exploratory mission, doing our first ever wave fishing trip all by ourselves, middle of the mullet run, in the water, and we are hooking fish. Watch your line, Brian, open your bail so you don't lose it. Open the bail. <laughs> all right, I'll land this fish. All right, we'll tell you why I'm yelling at him about that here in just a second. Let's get this beautiful Snooky. Woohoo! Woohoo! Chill out, buddy. Chill out, buddy. All right, look at that. My first wave fishing fish. I popped the circle hook right out. Just threw a little finger mullet out, matching this, the, the uh, circle hook to the size of the bait we're fishing. Look at that beautiful Snook. That's about the, five, the fish I saw jump, by the way, on your rod. So, anyhow, Brian, I'll let him explain that here in a minute. But so far, it's a great trip out here. And we're just getting the gist of it, getting the hang of things. But nice to catch a snook. We should catch all kinds of fish today. I'm excited. We'll see what happens. Just took a quick pick with this fish, but he's ready. Pretty cool to be in the water catching them and now letting them go. But not a keeper. Can't eat this fish. We're going to let him go. Nice. All right, let's try to catch some more fish and not lose any more gear. Yes, Star Sizzle. Yeah, I, dude, it's been a, a blooper show ever since we got here. We don't wade fish. And of course, we got to have all our camera gear and everything else. And I got this little raft with all my pudding's crap. And uh, camera so gear, I get like... out here and, and well, she's like just putting bait in. We, we actually blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So we went to the snook this, mor this morning to get shrimp in case we couldn't find any mullet. Snook, no bait and tackle. Yeah, which we love. And of course, there's freaking bait everywhere. So we bought a couple shrimp, and then Darcy caught some bait right uh, off a dock, very close to there. And then we come down here, and we're putting the bait into the little thing, the, you know, the pool behind us. And I'm just fishing randomly, and a snook takes my rod, it takes off. And I wasn't even ready, and it broke off on the dock. So uh, the day starting off great, right? No, that rod and reel is gone. Like, we can't no, find it. No, it's a different fish. That's the first fish. You just ruined the story. Oh, shoot. You're just... <laughs> You're okay. right. Okay, so bit back up. So then, I'm, uh, Darcy, Darcy's doing, when I'm getting, we're getting ready to get in the water, I have a, a rod out with a, a bobber. So I'm using a bobber, and she's using a, a little bit of weight to have it on the bottom of the school. Because we're chasing the mullet schools through the docks with current, and, and you want to put the bait either on, underneath them with the weight, the school of fish or off to the side. That's what I'm doing. So we're mixing it up. Anyway, so we're fooling around. I got my rod, I got my bobber out with a bait on it. And I'm just fooling around in my in my little raft doing something else. I don't even know what I'm doing. You were fixing my GoPro. Fixing the, putting the battery in the GoPro because we're filming. And the freaking bobber goes under and the rod shoots off the raft into the water and it's gone. So I just lost an Akuma Komodo reel and a custom rod by Barrett. Just took off. Down. So, so we had some trials and tribulations this morning, but now we're on the right track. We don't have any current yet, because um, we missed the current this morning, fooling around like an idiot looking for the rod. But uh, here we go. Good fish. Good story. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Do I have a fish on? Something grabbed it 100%. It just ripped out of my hand. Oh, oh, I think I got a fish. I got a fish. Didn't even know he was there. Come on, come on. Woo, we got a snook on. That was awesome. I saw this rock wall over here. Been moving dock to dock. He's a little bit bigger. And I was like, that looks like a perfect ambush point. And saw a bunch of little fingers getting destroyed. And we got my second snook of the day. Let's see if I can get my boat over here so I can put my rod down. Unless you want to grab my rod. What do you want to do, Brian? I'll grab the rod. Okay. All right, so the cool thing with these circle hooks is really like they hook themselves. I didn't even know he was on there. And they usually don't fall off the circle hook either. 
But he's hooked perfect, so if I can get my finger in his mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> Jeez, I sound like Brian these days. All right, so there's a circle hook right in the corner. I like to use a loop knot when I'm fishing docks and structures. I feel like it has, I don't know, extra protection. It kind of makes no sense, but double line instead of one line going to my hook. There we go. They look like a lot of twins out here today. I'm happy to be catching them though. Looks like something's up with his eyeball on this side. Looks like he maybe can't see out of that eye. I'm not sure. Interesting. That's what his eye should look like. So that's a normal eye. That's a messed up eye. All right. Nice fish. All right. Beautiful. There's really, like Brian said earlier, you know, we're waiting on that current. We talk about this all the time, but it's just such an important factor when it comes to inshore fishing. So we have no current and Usually the current moves really fast in the middle of the tide. So we, we're at the beginning of the incoming. So in the next, hopefully hour to two hours, it really will pick up and we'll catch some fish. Do you have a line? This is how we're gonna lose. <laughs> no, I don't think I have a bait on. Oh, you don't? Okay. Double check. You have a bait on. He's dead though, right? I don't know, but we can't risk it. <laughs> That's how I lost the whole rod. Okay, I just put a hook in our boat. That's a great idea, a boat that we float. All right, there he is. Let's let him go. You ready? Yeah, let him go. All right. Thanks, dear little dude. He's saying he won't let go of my thumb. Don't swim into me. There we go, he's going back, straight back to the wall. <laughs> cool. Well, tell us where you caught him, Sizzle. What? Tell us exactly where you caught that fish. Yeah. I'm gonna get that circle hook off your rod. Um, yeah, I saw this this like rock wall here, and we have a broken dock on this side, and we're just we're literally just walking an area that we haven't fished ever by ourselves. So we're just exploring. But I saw that walk wall, and I saw bait flipping over there, and the way that structure is set up, it just looks like a perfect ambush point for predator fish. So literally cast like 10 feet out and reeled up, and there was a fish on. Nice. All right, pretty cool. Yeah, you gotta be right there and see that's where the bite was. So I told you. In line with that piling. In line with the piling. Nice, nice fish. Get him, Brian. Get him, Brian. Woo! Nice fish, nice fish. All right guys, right nice just fish. that same spot nice Darcy fish. was nice in. Fish. Nice fish, nice fish, nice fish, Brian. That's a keeper. You think? Uh, just take your time. Don't I let am, him I get am. on anything. That's a nice fish, Brian. You wanna give me the rod? You wanna give me the rod? Wanna get the gripper? Come on, what are you doing? There's rocks over here. What are you doing? What are you doing, Brian? So give me the gripper. Oh my God. Oh, he's not, he's not, right, he's not a keeper, he's not a keeper. Keep I don't know, it's gonna be close. Here. Nice. No, it's not a keeper. It's a nice fish. Bigger fish. Woo, baby. All right, you got to help me here. I got, got two cameras going. I know. Okay, yeah. All right, guys, we got our grippers. A little bit bigger fish. He's almost a, you think he's a keeper? No. I don't know. He's 26. He could be 26. He's not, he's not going to keep. I wouldn't even measure it. 26, 27. Nice. Beautiful fish, though. This is the biggest fish today. Right in the same spot Darcy told me. Like she said, you see that circle hook? Right in the corner right here. We gotta be careful, we don't want that hook on our finger. Very nice. Woo! And we got these grippers, which I'm, we're starting to love. Show me your fish. I will, honey. Beautiful, look at that. Beautiful. And these things are working great. Let's let them go. He's gonna go right away, he's ready to go. On my finger. Go ahead, little fella. Yeah, he's, he's clamping on my finger. Good. Good. All day. He's not a keeper. I don't know. Our biggest fish of the day. Nice. Who's the winner so far? Now, if I could redeem myself finding my rod, then we'd be doing a good day. Yes. I, I forgot to tell you that as soon as, after, right after I lost my rod, Darcy fell down in the water and like her rod totally went underwater. So it's yeah. like, it's <laughs> just a comedy of errors. But now I'm starting to catch fish and there's no current, so I'm actually loving it. It's saving a lot of money and gas in my boat too. 
So, go ahead. Start it up. Okay. We took a little break. Took a little break. Honestly, we ran out of live mullet in our yeah. little pen that we had, so we had to come back to the truck. We ate something real quick in the middle of the tide, and now we should really have some moving water. So first things first, we need to throw the 10-foot net and get some more bait. So just real quick, I do the triple load method. I know a lot of you guys follow me on all Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly do this. I'm left-handed, so this goes on the cord goes on my right hand. And then when you make your coils, you just go over your pointer finger and your thumb. Don't do it any other way and then just continue to make your coils all the way down, but make sure you go that way in that direction until we get down to the horn of the cast net. I like to make smaller coils, just for me, because I'm a smaller person. Then my net, get it untwisted. I usually twist it all up so I can uh, travel with it easier and throw it in a bucket. Get it on the flat ground. Now, oh, Brian's bleeding all over the place. I fell down too. He totally fell down. All right, now I'm just stretching the net out a little bit and the weights here. And then when I go to make the coil on the horn, I like to have a little bit of the, your braille line sticking out. That's going to help it open up in a nice circle. You don't want it taunt to your horn. Right. You want a little bit of line out. Well, and that's just personal preference, isn't it? Um, I actually think that's like imperative if you want it to wide open oh, yeah? on a pa pancake. Like yeah. keep it spread out like that. Put the horn like that. Then I make one loop, small loop. Then I make my next loop. Before I do that, just make sure my net's clear real fast. If there's any hangups or anything, I can fix it real quick. Cinch it up straight. And I'm gonna walk down to our dock over here that we're using today. I'm at my aunt's house. I think Brian said that earlier. Um, anyhow, we're at my aunt's house. It's the only reason we're able to do this today because she has waterfront property. So this is all private property over here. Anyhow. Darcy's rich. <laughs> Darcy's came from a family of aristocrats. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then I like to do it a little bit below my waist for cinching up the net high and like throwing it over something like a dock. So I, otherwise I put it up here, but I put it a little lower so I can pick it up easier. You know, it's taking forever. Even my small fingers, I can't even barely get my hands around it, but I just work with it. All right, Those now- Small hands make small things hands look bigger, I mean. right? Yeah. Now we pull a third of the net out straight from the middle of your finger where your thumb and your pointer fingers are going together. That's really important too. Throw that over my knee and then I just clear it again, just in case. Don't want to mess up the throw at all. Good. Lay it back down. Now I take that third of the net, lay it right over my hand like so. I'm gonna take this part of the net that's closest to me and put that over my shoulder for the triple load. Now triple load means that the net is, is, is she has three points of contact. And this is gonna be this hand, this hand, and her shoulder. Some people put the, the you've seen other methods, but people put a lead in the mouth. That's also a triple load with different. Yes. So now you can see the net is basically partially open already. So when I go to launch it, it'll open up in hopefully a perfect circle. And then I got my pinky finger wrapped around this corner here for the last let go. So that helps open up the circle. Can you also grab my water bottle, please? Yes. And let's go walk down there. We got overcast conditions, middle of the day, but it's important to have cloud cover because the fish see you. I got a launch. This is school of bait right here, guys. Get ready. Mullet run full action. We got enough. That's all <laughs> that we care about there. Kind of throwing into the wind is difficult. The net kind of did it. Kind of got laid flat just a little bit because the wind is so strong today. Time to put on a new bait. Let me get him out. Got this by way at Lower Keys Tackle, but I think they sell it a lot of different places. Juicy bait. So now you just rig it through the upper lip of your fish or the mullet so you can at least breathe. I guess you could get both lips, but I don't recommend it. You see how their lips go down because they, they're bottom feeders. So just go through that upper lip and then right between the nose and like the eyes, there's like this soft spot that you can just slowly work the hook through. You don't want to break their necks. So I kind of control them and wiggle it through. Something like that. And about a foot and a half up my 40 pound leader, I have a little split shot just to get him down a little bit because usually that's kind of where the predator fish are and to hopefully distinguish him from the other schools of mullet that are all on the top. So this will hopefully take him down a bit. Now we're gonna cast and what we're doing today is casting up here on like these sea walls, but since we have a lower tide, you can see it's already fall, it has fallen here earlier, it was at my waist. 
but so I'm not really focusing there anymore. I was this morning, but now what we're doing is casting and all the structure that we can see. So this dock right in front of us is a perfect example. And what I like to do is hit like every span, get your bait as close as possible, if possible underneath the dock, and then uh, as close to the piling as possible because that's kind of where snook will hang out, maybe flounder, sheep's head, snapper, all kinds of stuff. And I was fishing shrimp earlier. I got a bunch of uh, bites, but I think they were like small little snappers because of course, the intercoastal is also a perfect uh, place, nursery for a lot of small fish to grow up before they head offshore. But this is what we're doing. We're casting, working our way up each dock, walking through. Ooh, big explosion right there. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Recast. This happens a lot. It's part of the game when you're casting. Hand-eye coordination, perfect. Got it right under that dock. And we're basically wherever you see explosions, cast over there and hitting every piling or anything that's hanging in the water is a good thing. What are you doing with this? Oops. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Liar. <laughs> See if I can get it closer. Now you gotta walk over your bait. Brian might lose his rod. It's the most expensive rod we have. Oi! Almost killed him. Right, it's a delicate balance between getting your fish in the right spot killing it against the dock or getting it stuck on someone's dock where you're not supposed to be touching because it's someone else's property. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so legally we're allowed to be in the water. We're legally we're allowed to fish. No homeowner is allowed to mess with us or like not allowed to touch their property. So we can't touch their land and we can't touch their dock. But again, the only dock we're touching is the one that, you know, my aunt has over here and was more than happy to let us come down and fish. Get him, Brian. Get him, Brian. Nice snook. Nice snook. What you got? You got a snooky. All got? right, you guys. We've been working these docks. I'm going to lower my drag a little bit, actually. And we're having much luck. But we decided to come out here. Whoa, watch him. Watch him on me. Nice fish. Yeah. Here we go. Woo, look at him. Can't see him. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, you're blocking me, babe. So about the same size ones we've been catching, I think. Right? Yeah. Hold the sizzle. Oh, we need the things. Oh, you got it. Just hold tight. <laughs> you got to really grab them. Take the Another nice fish like the other one I caught. Take the hook out. I just want to see if I had to worry about it being a keeper. No. <laughs> no. He's about an inch smaller than that last fish. All right. I just know the size of fish over the years. Beautiful. 25er. 25er? 20, maybe same sort of size as the other one. But you see, guys, just look. The tide's going down. So the tide's outgoing tide. And it's really shallow now. So we started working our way out here. And I said, let's hit the, you know, we got to make sure we hit the end of this dock. And that's where we've got the fish. So we get a little deeper and more structure and more shallow line. So that's what I said. That's what we both said. We both know that. <laughs> All right, so beautiful number four today. Here we go. Woo! All right. Good job. Good morning. We decided to come do this again. We had so much fun yesterday. No <laughs> boat gas. My boat didn't break down. <laughs> no expenses. I, I like couldn't that. be more excited. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Loaded up. We have nice cloud cover. No. Yesterday was like 25. 30 mile an hour winds. Today, beautiful. I think there's like pilchards right here. I think there's pilchards sitting right here, honestly. Alrighty guys, put in here, Darcy's getting a net together. I'm using, I'm using my tranks today because I lost my Komodo yesterday. I'm pretty poor at casting this, but I'm using a popping cork. We got a storage and a couple mullet. Still haven't, Darcy still hasn't caught a ton of mullet yet. But again, I'm just working these docks. You're on, you're on. That's, that's, that's you. That's you, Brian. You got popped. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Get back, get back. Get back. He might not be gone. He totally popped you. Yeah, not totally. That was the fish that was right here. 
Come on, baby. Come on. Let's give it one minute and we'll walk. Just in case. Oh, underneath you, underneath you. Real, 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 real. All right, stop. Woo! That was epic. All right, we're clear. I knew that fish would still be there. Woo, feisty little snooky right there. Trying to control him, keep him away from the dock. There he is. Woo! <laughs> it's so crazy catching these fish so close and personal. He is not done yet. Well, I've got the drag locked here and literally got it. We both cast it in the same area. Brian got an explosion and he walked like very close to where the fish was. And he's like, oh, he's gone now. I'm like, well, just give it a minute and let's see if the fish is still there. And he ate my bait. Oh, it's frayed pretty good. Okay. You want to get the get rippers or? He's a baby. You can grab him. Okay. Yeah, it's really our first fish of the morning. The current's not moving quite as fast as it was yesterday. Darcy took a long time to get I'll bait. Put the rod here. Yeah, I got it, baby. Thank you so much. Woo -hoo. You don't want to get ripped up by him. Got him. Yeah, it took me a long time to get bait this morning, like two hours, almost two hours, an hour and a half. We just have totally different conditions. It's flat calm, there's no wind, really no current. First blow up and fish of the morning. That is a healthy snook right there. Nice. And the baits we're using today are slightly bigger, but beautiful healthy fish. He's heavy, he's probably full of mullet. <laughs> feeding like crazy but we saw an explosion literally the first one in almost an hour of fishing and we caught a fish so you got to look for that and keep moving beautiful beautiful guy let him go he's ready to take off he just did a crazy head shake but now he's like you haven't let me go he to take off kind of cool just being in their element let him go when he's ready Hang on to him for a second. <laughs> there he goes. This is gonna watch this epic release. That is cool. That is cool. <laughs> All right. 